Hi everybody, my name is Carly. I am so excited that you are here. Today I'm going to be making my very first coat jacket situation. We are getting into autumn in Australia and I'm a very cold person so I am already thinking about staying warm this winter and I really want to get to the holy grail of making my very own quilted jacket. I've been loving like patchwork jackets and quilted coats. So the brief is colorful, fun coat jacket situation with pockets and a collar. Wish me luck. Okay, so let's talk inspiration. I have just bought this jacket from Uniqlo. I adore the way it fits. It's just oversized enough for it to be like super comfy, super wearable. But also my other point of inspiration is a lot more coaty. I made a little toile last week, which was kind of to practice my technique for my quilted jacket idea. And this is kind of the vibe. It's kind of like big collar, long coat, big pockets. So to get started, I've compiled a bunch of cream pastel-y toned scraps and offcuts. I'm gonna cut out my self-drafted pattern pieces. And then from that, I'm gonna start patchworking them together to make a new textile. And I'm gonna get sewing. To make this pattern, I just hacked it off a basic bodice block that was a few sizes too big for me because I really wanted there to be extra room to layer nice jackets and jumpers underneath it. And then I elongated the pattern and added a slight A-line shape to it just so that it would give me some drapey vibes. Then I got to patchworking and for that I just top stitched these fabrics onto this white cotton and it kind of gave this cool patchworky vibe. So I've cut out the front and back panels and I've done a tiny little bit of patchworking on this back panel and I think I'm going to now attach this back panel to the front panels at the shoulder seams and that's just going to give me a better look at how it's all looking. I might even put it on my dress mannequin and then I can have a little look at where all the patchworking should sit. At the moment, I think I want to use the scraps in the organic shapes that they're already cut in and just find a way to make them look interesting and just showcase how scraps look. So I think I'm going to construct, put it on my mannequin and then have a play with where they're all sitting. To finish all my edges, I'm going to use a flat felled seam and I'll show you how to do it if you haven't seen it before. But basically it's just going to encase all of the raw edges in the garment without having to use an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. It's really easy too, so I'll do my best to show you. Okay, here is my very best exclamation of a flat felled seam. You're gonna put your garment wrong sides together and then sew that seam. I know it goes against everything we've been taught, wrong sides together though. Then you're gonna press that seam out so it's nice and flat. And then you're going to clip one side of that seam so that you can fold over the other seam allowance and completely cover the raw edge. Then you're just gonna top stitch that seam and it will be constructed and all your seams will be covered. As I didn't want any exposed seams in this garment, I also did this process to the side seams of the coat. You definitely don't have to do this step. You could overlock or zigzag stitch or even line your jacket, but I just really wanted my jacket to be as durable as possible without lining, so I went for the flat fell. All right, we have a rough shape uh, put together. It's kind of cool, it's too long. I can't quite get the whole coat in the frame. And it's a little bit heavier on this side than it is this side because this fabric is a bit thicker. So I'm gonna try and put some of this fabric on this side as well, patchworked or like top stitched on, just to even out the weight. This kind of patchworking I didn't actually end up going with. It was just a top stitching decorative kind of vibe where I was going to iron all of the raw edges in and then just top stitch decoratively all over the coat. But as I was pinning it to the bodice, I just didn't really like it. And so I scrapped it and just went straight to collar construction. Hi 
everybody, it's a new day. So, <laughs> to begin with, I'm going to finish the inside of the neck with a facing and then I'm going to attach my collar and sleeves. And then I think once I've got a full look at the vibe of the jacket, then I can see if my patchwork idea is even going to work. I apologize for all of the mumble jumble of this, but I'm really just learning along the way. So yeah, let's get into making the facing. So basically for the facing, I just cut out two rectangular strips that were the length from the top of the collar to the bottom of the hem. I ironed them and then I got to pinning them right sides together on the front of the coat. Knowing what I know now, I think you should actually do this step after attaching the collar, but it still turned out fine, so it's okay. I then understitched that seam so it would lay nice and flat and then ironed that facing to the wrong side of the jacket, making sure that the raw edge was not exposed and it was just tucked right underneath. And then I just pinned it down evenly so that it was ready to sew. It's just pinned, but you can see now with the facing that it finishes off that edge really cleanly. And so I'm going to stitch that down so it doesn't move. And if you wanted that stitching to be really clean, you can basting stitch this seam by hand and then top stitch with your machine because you'll have a guideline with that basting stitch. I know that when I sew on my domestic, when I'm top stitching, it just looks better than when it's coming through from the underside. But my industrial does a really good job with its stitching, so I'm just gonna stitch it from the underside. It will still look good. I'm up to my most frightening part so far, which is the collar. Now, I don't really feel like I can explain this very well because I'm still learning how to do it, but basically I'm doing a collar that has a stand. So I have one piece that looks like this and it will attach to the shirt like this. And then I have my collar piece, which looks like this and it attaches to the stand. And that is what gives it lift. To draft the pattern for the collar, I took the measurement of the neckline of the jacket and then I made this stand literally by eyeballing other collar stands in other people's videos where they make jackets. And then I just used a slightly smaller length than the collar stand to make my collar edge. And once again, I eyeballed this shape. I will put in the description some patterns that are similar to what I'm making just for reference, especially for this collar part. If you are an eyeball sewer like me, I'll show you a flat lay of what these pattern pieces look like so that hopefully it helps. So the top piece here is the collar stand and the bottom piece is the collar. And I cut out two identical pieces from each pattern piece for this collar. Then I pinned the collar right sides together and sewed along the right edge, the long edge and the left edge, leaving the shorter edge unsewn. And that's so that we can flip it and attach it to the stand. Then I clipped the seam allowance just to cut down some bulk and ensure that it would flip really nicely and kind of give a crisp edge. And then I proceeded to flip it and just very gently poke out that edge with my little tool, but you could just use the end of a paintbrush. And I gave it a good press, of course, just to ensure everything looked nice and clean. Basically, I've sandwiched my collar in between my two collar stands. So there's one on this side, and then there's one on that side. And I pinned through all four layers. When it flips out, We'll have right sides out and all of the seams are going to be encased in that. When I'm sewing, I'm just going to be really careful that I am in fact catching all four layers. Also, I just wanted to take a second to say, definitely give eyeballing it a go. <laughs> I know it sounds so vague and so scary, but once you start having a rough understanding of shapes, it's not impossible to look at someone else's pattern or a shape online and go, yeah, I'm going to give that a crack especially if you know where it's attaching to and what measurements you're going to need. You can always just eyeball it, give it a go, and be like, oh, I like that shape, but I wish that it came in more, or I like that shape, but I wish that it was 
you know, smaller, whatever, you can always fix it along the way. Patterns are exceptional and I, I do love using them and I recommend them too, but well, it's the worst that can happen. <laughs> Once I had my collar sandwich, I sewed all the way down that line and also the edge of the collar and I snipped my seam allowance and proceeded to flip it right sides out. And then, of course, as always, I gave it a really good press. Well, I've actually decided that I'm going to hand stitch this part down because Stitching in the ditch honestly scares me and I just don't really feel like overcoming that fear today. <laughs> and hand stitching always is kind of cute, so that's what I'm gonna do. I put the collar on, I'm so obsessed. I think there has to be a button right here and then it can just sit like this. I'm really happy, guys. It's not perfect. I think I would love to actually purchase a pattern just so I can learn exactly what to do here because I'm not convinced that the order in which I did steps was correct, but it does the job. It's pretty good. Onwards and upwards, hopefully. I thought this would be a really good time to stop and do the question of the week, so let's get into that. Okay, the question of the week this week is, where do I like to find patterns? And I'm so excited about this question because I love finding good patterns. It has been one of the best ways for me to learn how to sew. One of my favorite places to find patterns is on Etsy. You can just search in the search bar the kind of garment that you want to make and then add PDF pattern. And you will get so many awesome patterns and a lot of them are designed by small artists and like local designers. It's just really cool. And I've found that there are a lot of different size options available on Etsy too. Some of my favorite pattern makers are Vicky Sews. Their instructions are very clear and their packs are just really well made. I also love Hubbard Ding. Their patterns are really fun and flowy and I've enjoyed working on them too. And recently one of my favorite of all time patterns has been by the designer Anna Allen Clothing and I made her Persephone pants. And those pants are literally the best fitting pants, the nicest jeans I've ever owned. I've made two pairs already and I think I'm going to purchase another one of her pant patterns and make my third pair because the instructions, the fit, everything was impeccable. One of the other ways I find patterns very casually is just by following a lot of other sewists online and I always read their captions of their posts of what they're making, whether they've hacked a pattern, like how they did it. I love learning just by seeing what other people do. And so I think if you're looking for great patterns, just follow people that have similar style to you and are also sewing. Hopefully that answered your question. And if you have a question, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I answer one question every week in my videos, so I will get to it. Without further ado, back to the call. Before I move to sleeves, I really wanna try and fix a weight problem in this garment. What I'm gonna do, because we've already got a patchworky vibe, I'm gonna cut some sort of squiggly pattern out of this side and trace that over some of this green corduroy upholstery fabric. And I'm going to attach the green on this side. And hopefully that adds some weight on the right side of this jacket. And if not, I will take some of this out and replace it with just this calico, or it's actually canvas. So I just ambitiously cut out a random freestyle shape from the bottom of my jacket, which is terrifying. And then I traced it with this new fabric. And what I'm doing is I'm just pinning it right sides together and it should just completely fill in that space. I think what I'm gonna do is finish the raw edge with bias tape on the inside because I don't really want any visible overlocking. This was a pretty self-explanatory part of the process. I just really slowly sewed along that curved edge and pressed out my seams so that everything was laying flat before adding my bias tape. 
I'm just stitching one side of my bias tape down to the inside of my fabric and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to stitch it again and that will cover my raw edge. Okay, this is the only way I can give you a full length view right now, um, but love it, love it. It helps the weight, but now I feel like I want another cutout on this side that comes a bit higher. So I'm going to repeat this step on the other side. An important note to say about adding these little patchwork blobs is just to make sure that you add seam allowance to your pattern just so that you don't have any mishaps. And then you should have this cool patchworking effect. Okay, we're getting there guys. We are getting there. I have just trimmed the hem and made sure that it all lined up and now I think I'm going to do a hem facing. So if you don't know what that is, it's the same as what I did here. It's just going to be a strip of fabric, a rectangle, and I'm going to sew it right sides together on the front of my garment and then flip it under and then sew it again. And it's just like kind of a fancy way of doing a hem, but I think it will be really nice and luxurious for this coat. And I'm gonna do it in this green fabric. So it will just be like a top and tail moment. I have such a crush on hem facings, guys. They're so pretty and I feel like they add luxury to every garment and they're easy to make too. You just need a big rectangle that's the length of your garment, hem. Then you sew it right sides together to the garment. I understitch mine because it makes it lay really nice and flat. And then all you need to do is stitch the top part down. And this is the hem facing all completed. Okay, to make my sleeves, I'm just gonna measure the length of the armhole and then make a really rough draft of a sleeve style pattern. I think it wanted to be a kind of bishop sleeve shenanigan with a little cuff at the bottom. But truly, I'm going to just make it up as I go. But I will show you. <laughs> I don't really feel qualified to talk on this, but I'll show you what I did. For a lantern or bishop sleeve, I believe you need more volume in the back of the sleeve than the front. And my old school pattern book said to do a slash and spread, which is when you just slash into your pattern, you just spread it out a little bit and it gives you a new shape. And this is what mine looked like. And then I lay that down on my patchworking fabric of choice. And to patchwork the sleeves, I decided to do French seams. So that involves sewing things wrong sides together, ironing it, and then stitching it again, encasing those raw edges. P.S. The main thing with French seams is to make sure that you do your seams wrong sides together, which is exactly what I just didn't do. So don't be like me, wrong sides together. Feels wrong, but it's all gonna make sense. So yeah, I just French seamed all of my seams for the sleeves, the patchworking and the side seam included. Hello everyone, it is a new day. It's day three of making my coat. Last night I did my first sleeve off camera because I just needed to practice and make sure that I could do it. And I think it went really well. So I'm gonna run you through what I did to do my sleeve. I patchworked and I French seamed these seams here, but you could definitely overlock them or you could just use one fabric, that would be fine. But I don't want any exposed seams in my garment, as you know. And now I'm just gonna French seam this sleeve closed and I'm going to French seam this sleeve to the sleeve hole, gather the bottom with some pleats and attach a cuff. So it's pretty straightforward. And then once we're done with the sleeves, we're truly on the home stretch and it's time to pick out some buttons. Guys, French seaming sleeves is not as intimidating as I once thought it was. If you just take your steps slowly and you just follow the French seam protocols, I promise you it is not as intimidating or scary as it looks. You can do it, guys. So once you've sewn your sleeve um, wrong sides together in the jacket, you can take the sleeve out, and this will be the wrong side, then just put push the sleeve in. So now we have the armhole looking like this from the wrong side. And I'm just gonna iron this seam so it's really flat and then stitch around and that's what's gonna give us the French seam for the sleeve. Here is the ironing process. 
you just take your time and then all you have to do is sew around that edge. Again, take your time. And when you're finished, you'll have an amazing French seamed sleeve. So this is what the inside of the sleeve will look like. It's just really nicely French seamed. And then we can turn the garment right sides out and it just looks like a sleeve. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But it's all nice and neat on the inside. How easy was that? Yes. For the cuffs of the sleeve, I just measured them around my own wrist to what I wanted. I cut out two, one for each arm, and then I sewed them right sides together. Once I did that, I pressed that seam out and folded them halfway over each other. I don't know how else to say that, so that the right sides were facing me. I'm gonna pleat the end of my sleeve now so that it matches the length of this cuff. And I know there's probably a technical way to do this, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. It hasn't failed me yet. But yeah, I'm just gonna do pleats, pin them, and I'm just gonna keep doing that around the cuff of the sleeve until it looks like it's the same length as that. And then I'm just gonna do a basting stitch. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this way, but also it is the way that I do this kind of thing. Take from that what you want to. Don't judge me, I guess I just did a dodge job of this part. I just stitched down the pleats and that just made it easier for me to put the cuff on. The cuff is right side facing the wrong side of the sleeve. That is something to be careful that you're doing it the right way around. Anyway, then I stitched that cuff down. So I flipped my work right sides out now and it should look like this. And then I just iron down a tiny bit from this top section so that when I fold it over, there won't be any raw edges showing. So it'll basically sit like this. And now I'm gonna sew on my domestic so I can use the arm of my machine just to run around this edge with a top stitch. And I'm also gonna use a heavy duty thread just so it is really durable. This one has felt like a really big one, guys. I think I'm at the final step. I'm just hand sewing my buttonholes and my buttons. I just don't really like the look of the buttonholes that my machine does, so I've learned how to hand stitch them. I will link the tutorial that taught me in the description. Once I've got this last button on, it will mark the end of my project. I'm so excited. So why don't we just jump straight into the montage and have a look at the finished product. today's video everyone that one was a journey to say the very least but it was so fun to just practice some different skills from my everyday sewing the collar and collar stand were challenging and I think I did them slightly wrong but you live and you learn anyway I hope it was interesting to watch if you make anything like this please be sure to tag me I would really love to see your creations and as always leave a comment below and let me know what you're working on this week because it's so enjoyable to know if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much for sticking around be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and let's be friends and otherwise I will see you in the next video thanks guys bye